When Microsoft initially released Windows 10, the free upgrade was upgrade only, and this was problematic. With Windows 10 TH2, Microsoft began to treat Windows 7 OEM and Windows 8 OEM product keys as Windows 10 product keys. These fixes alleviated most of the hassles with Windows installation and product activation. For Windows 7, the 25-digit product key is affixed to a COA. That's a sticker that's attached to your system. This COA is often found hidden under the battery compartment to prevent fading. Unfortunately, there are a subset of systems that have a faded COA, such as the one shown, where the 25-digit product key is unreadable. If these systems have been upgraded to Windows 10 already and Windows 10 has been activated, then your system is a Windows 10 edition device. This means that Windows 10 Edition can be clean installed with a product key and it will automatically reactivate when online. This solves more of the installation issues and product activation issues. However, there are some cases where one has not upgraded to Windows 10 and one has a faded COA. Assuming you want to directly clean install Windows 10 on such a configuration, there is an unofficial way. This requires your original OEM Windows 7 installation activated with OEM System Locked Pre-Installation. I've got an Optiplex 790 and this system has never had Windows 10 installed on it. And it's not a Windows 10 Pro device. And although it's Windows 7 Pro COA is perfectly readable, for the sake of this tutorial video, I'll pretend it's not and pretend I can't read the COA. So I'm going to go to start and I'm going to right click computer and I'm going to select properties. And at the bottom, we'll note that Windows is activated and it has product ID containing OEM 899. This means it's activated using OEM system lock pre-installation. And I have more detailed guides on how to install Windows 7 using OEM system lock pre-installation. So let's look at the system information, the MS Info 32. So we say it's a Dell and it's an Optiplex 790 and it has an SM BIOS version of 2.6. So now what you want to do is insert your Windows 10 Redstone 1 bootable USB, open it up in Windows Explorer and go to the Sources folder. Now you're looking for an XE within this Sources folder and I advise just copying it to the desktop. It's called gatherosdate.exe and what you want to do is right click it and select run as administrator and then accept the user account control prompt. So what this should do is it should create a file called genuine ticket.xml. And once we have this file, what we're going to do is we're going to just copy it to our bootable USB. And then we're going to use our bootable USB to clean install Windows 10. So I'll not go through the installation in much detail. I'll just make some notes. So once you select install now, you'll get to the screen where you're prompted to input a product key. Because your product key is faded, you'll need to select I don't have a product key. You'll need to then select the correct edition of Windows 10 to install, corresponding to your Windows 7 OEM edition in system. So I had Windows 7 Pro installed, and as a consequence, I need to select Windows 10 Pro during installation. Then it set the license agreement, and then I'll do a custom 
install deleting all the old partitions on the hard drive. I'm not going to cover the Windows 10 clean installation in much detail because I've got ample other tutorial videos dedicated to this. So once Windows 10 is clean installed, you can open up MS Info 32 again and you can see that Windows 10 Pro is installed. You can see that the build is 14393. You can again see that it's a Dell Optiplex 790. The SM BIOS is 2.6. And in this case, I've installed it using a UEFI boot. So, what we can do now is copy this genuine ticket to its correct location. So, it's on our bootable USB, which we've snapped to the left. And to the right, we'll just go to this PC and then the C drive. Now we're looking for a folder called Program Data, and by default it's hidden. So we'll just go up to the address bar and we'll type in Program Data and press Enter. And now we can see the folder that we're looking for. So we're looking for the Microsoft folder and then we're looking for the Windows folder and then the clip SVC folder and then the genuine ticket folder and what we want to do is copy the genuine ticket.xml into this folder and we'll need to select continue to copy it over with administrator privileges so if we right click the start button and select system, we'll see that Windows 10 Pro is not activated. This is because the system was installed without a product key and has never been made a Windows 10 Pro device. After the restart, the computer will automatically look for this genuine ticket. And if it finds it, it will contact the Microsoft product activation server and this will make the system a Windows 10 edition device. In this case, it'll be a Windows 10 Pro device. So we can now see that the system is indeed activated. Should I decide to clean install Windows 10 Pro on this device, it will automatically reactivate when online. I don't need to bother with this genuine ticket ever again. Essentially, during clean installation, it will contact the Microsoft Product Activation Server, which will recognize the device and give it the green light for product reactivation. And just out of interest, of course, we can have a look at this genuine ticket.xml file. So I'm just going to double click it and it'll open it in Internet Explorer. And the XML file itself doesn't look too interesting. However, one thing to note is that it's timestamped. And you'll notice that mine is timestamped on the 23rd of February 2017. And this is a good few months after the 29th of July 2016. This means that Microsoft's confusing marketing campaign can be completely disregarded. It was essentially a marketing ploy to entice users to upgrade within the first year. Clean installation of Windows 10 using a Windows 7 OEM or Windows 8 OEM product key still works. The conventional upgrade method works with some tricks covered in another tutorial video and this initial clean installation using the activation mechanism of the upgrade install still works. So I'll just end in an advertisement to our kith and kin in Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom, Kanzig nations, check out Kanzig International and of course sign our petition to advocate and introduce legislation to bring our people and our nations together.